All right, folks, today I'm gonna to show you how I turned that frigid air refrigerator into a hot air incubator. First off, why do you even want to use a refrigerator? Well, first, with any homemade incubator, you start out with an insulated box. I'm not the smartest fella on the planet, but that is an insulated box, and it cost me zero dollars and only about 30 minutes to go get. And it conveniently already has two separate compartments, one for the controls and one for the incubator. Now, if you've seen my previous video, you know there's four basic requirements for incubation. Temperature, humidity, turning, and ventilation. And uh, we've got three of those boxes checked off on this so far. Let me open it up and show you what we got. The first thing we have to control is the temperature. And I'm doing that by this heat lamp right here. Now, I went back and forth between the heat lamp and a hair dryer. Now, if you've ever taken a hair dryer apart, you know there's a lot going on inside there. That's why I opted for the heat lamp. Electrically, they're a lot simpler. A lot less can go wrong in the environment of incubation, higher temperature and higher humidity. And speaking of humidity, that's number two on the list. Let me show you what we got. Now, when I built this originally, uh, earlier on, I had a rectangular Tupperware uh, container about probably holds a gallon or two. But for visual purposes, I'll use this feed bucket. Directly under the light on those boards is where the Tupperware would sit. Now, that light gets that water pretty warm. But even with a big container of water there, I was still not getting the humidity that I needed. So, let me show you what I did to help that. That's where those two little tubes coming from the back. That's where they come in. They go down in the water tub. Those two little tubes are coming from a fish tank aerator. And uh, the theory behind it is the bubbles break the water down into smaller molecules and, you know, thus raises the humidity. And it worked. Let me just back up just a minute and uh, go upstairs and show you what controls all this stuff. And the star of the show is the Inkbird ITC608. All the Inkbird is really is a smart switch. It turns stuff on and off depending on the parameters you have it set to. And it's pretty easy to figure out. For instance, you'll see here where it says work one. I have work one tied into the light. So in the programming, I set my temperature, which is measured off of this probe right here, to stay between 101 and 99 degrees Fahrenheit. When it gets down to 99, that turns on when it gets up to 101, that turns off. And I have work two set to humidity, which is measured or monitored rather by this device right here. Now, when the humidity gets too low, work two turns on and it turns on the aerator that blows bubbles in the water container. And of course, when the humidity gets back up to where it needs to be, the aerator cuts off. Now, the third thing I had to figure out was turning. Now, as much as I love building stuff and like tinkering with little electronics and stuff like that, this was a no-brainer. I just used the bottom half of an old incubator we had and the turner out of it. And uh, it, it don't get much easier than that. This thing will turn eggs, I believe, once every four hours it makes a cycle. One more thing I'd like to add, uh, something I hadn't talked about yet, it's that little fan right there. Basically all that little fan does, I have it plugged up on a 24 volt little power supply. All it does is keep the air circulating around in here. I'd like to think with the air circulating around in there, it, it'll prevent any hot spots or uh, any, you know, collection of humidity in one certain spot. In my mind, with it being circulated like that, it'll keep everything a lot better in balance than if it was just still air. And it would give the temperature and the humidity uh, monitors in there a lot a lot more balanced reading now on to the ventilation issue I have a hole right there that the power cord is coming out of and this is a good exhaust vent but I don't have an inlet just yet I want to put the inlet kind of down here on this side whereas the heat of course it rises it'll find its way out that hole uh, and that'll in turn draw fresh air in from the bottom now will any of this even work I mean, will it even work? I'm convinced that if all the conditions are met for the amount of time necessary, it has to work. But the only way for you to know if it's gonna work is if you uh, hit that subscribe button and click that bell. That way this spring, when I load that thing up with eggs and they start hatching, 
you'll get the video. Until next time, God bless.